Good evening and welcome to Rye Hill Baptist Church for Wednesday, March the 3rd, 2021. This evening's message brought to us by Brother Paul Walker is entitled, Forward From Here. Enjoy. It's good to see everybody tonight. And uh, Paul didn't get to preach last week. Uh, He was a little under the weather. So I asked him just to step in tonight. I knew he already had a sermon ready to go. And so we're going to hear from Paul Walker tonight. All right, let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you for the day. Uh, God, just thank you for a beautiful Lord's Day you've given us. And God, I thank you just for your many blessings. Uh, God, you have blessed us so much, the church, and uh, God, just the Spirit of God. And Lord, just the fellowship, Lord, uh, just the kononia, that that. Uh, love that we have for one another. And uh, God, I just pray you be with Paul as he preaches tonight. I thank you for all those who watch us online. And again, Lord, we just thank you for Sunday. Lord, your spirit was strong. And God, we just so look forward to this Sunday again. And uh, Lord, just listening to the praise team practice was just amazing. And uh, God, we just thank you for all of our uh, faithful friends and guests. And God, we just, we just pray that we can honor you in all that we do. Uh, Lord, thank you for Paul and his ministry, Lord. Uh, He has served you a long, long time. And God, we look forward to hearing uh, uh, from him tonight. So God, uh, just open our hearts and our eyes and our minds to what you have to say. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, good evening. It's good to be with you. I uh, missed last Wednesday night as you all noticed, but uh, I came to the office, uh, and by the way, I didn't have COVID, okay? <laughs> but uh, I came to, by the office to do something Thursday morning after the Wednesday night service, and uh, the guys, excuse me, my pastor and associate pastor, they were talking about something about how great the crowd was on Wednesday night. And of course, Steve, made sure that he rubbed it in on Brother Mike a little bit, saying, you know, you announced Paul Walker was going to speak, and that's the reason the crowd came. I I quickly assured them that that was not the case, that the beautiful weather was the reason people came last Wednesday night. And we're blessed again today to have uh, good weather. So, Well, I want to talk tonight about... uh, and I'm bad about not looking at my notes. I, li- I like to speak extemporaneously. And uh, I can't spell that, but I know what it means. <laughs> the path forward or the road ahead, however you want to determine it. Things sure are changing, aren't they? Yeah. They sure are changing. And of course, it's unnerving to a great degree, it is for me at least, when I see all that's going on in our world. But God has a purpose in everything, and I'm trusting in Him. And the way forward is this. He has us, and we're not alone. Hebrews 13, 5 says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. And I want to tell you, that's a precious, precious promise. My uh, brother-in-law, who I did the funeral for in Shawnee, Oklahoma, back in March, died alone in the hospital because of COVID. Nobody, his family couldn't even go in to see him. But I'm, when I think about that and I think of the sadness of that hour, I'm reminded of that verse, Hebrews 13, 5. Because as believers, we are never alone. He is always with us. And the second point of my sermon tonight, and he told me I had to go 30 minutes And I don't think I've ever preached for 30 minutes in all my life. 
The second thing is this. Not only does he have us, and we're not alone, but we have him, and he is with us. John 14, beginning in verse 16. I love these words of Jesus. I will pray the Father, and he will give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Yet in a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but ye see me, be, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day you shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. <clears throat> he that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. He is with us, and we have him. The scripture says that the Spirit of God, the God of creation, the God of redemption, dwells within us in every believer. There is a nearness about that, a closeness about that. And we can trust in him because he lives within us. That verse that speaks about the truth, and I know we're on every side. We, we hear things and we are so aware of all the ideas and opinions and hopefully facts that we're not sure of facts, but we really can't separate. We really don't know what the truth is. I know you are like I am. Sometimes you hear something and you think, that's not right. You want to jump up and say, wait a minute. What about this or that? But our God is a God of truth. And the truth is that he lives within us. And how we know the truth from error is that we look into his word. That's what he said. And we look to the Holy Spirit to teach us his word, and he will teach us. And we can be assured of the Spirit because he lives within us. And so there is a threefold assurance of knowing the truth. I know I'm probably as guilty as some of you are, but I'm prone to jump to conclusions before I really, really come to know what is the truth. And so we, in this day and age in which we live, we need to examine everything in the light of God's Word, the leadership of God's Spirit, and the witness that's in, within every one of us as a believer. The last thing, the third thing, is this. Not only is he with us and we're not alone, and we have him because he is with us, but we have each other. Isn't that a blessed, precious thought? If you look at Hebrews, the 10th chapter, there are some precious words in there that that I think speaks volumes to every one of us, and you probably have read them many times, but we need to be reminded of them over and over again. Hebrews chapter 10, and beginning in verse 19. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiness, the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. 
and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Beginning at the last phrase of that last verse, as you see the day approaching, can't you see it? It's there. If you're not seeing it, it's because you're not looking and you're not listening, you're not paying attention. And some people think, well, this is a sad time if you think the end is near. But the truth is, for us as believers, it's the most exciting time in all the world. Amen. Wouldn't it be grand and wouldn't it be glorious if this group were permitted to be part of that raptured group? Because saints for ages have looked forward to this, mo this momentous day when Jesus would come again. Those verses also speak about this. They speak about provoking one another. Helping one another is what it means. It doesn't mean criticizing one another. It does not mean judging one another. It means reaching out and lifting up. And that's what we ought to be known as. We ought to be known as people who really care about other people. But I'm afraid that modern day Christianity has been tagged with the judgment tag because we point our finger at everything and everybody. And maybe that's the reason that sometimes our churches are empty because the very people that need to come are afraid to come or they don't feel comfortable to come or they've never been invited to come, but they like us are the very people that need to be here. They need to hear the gospel. I can remember many, many years ago, and I can probably say this and look around the room and not anybody here older than I am. So, uh, and you know, sometimes that's something to brag about. <laughs> but I can remember my days as just a junior in Sunday school, maybe 12 years old or so at First Baptist Church, Fort Smith. And those were the days of J. Harold Smith. And I want to tell you, there was a revival meeting every Sunday. I mean, people were being saved. Uh, folks were getting right with God every day. But I can remember among all the finery that I saw of the maybe well-dressed that were there, but what made the most impression upon me was seated also in that auditorium were folks of all sorts of economic backgrounds and moral backgrounds or immoral backgrounds because they knew there were people that cared. That's what our church ought to be filled with. We need to be ministered to, but God has called us to minister because we have been blessed we're to pass on the blessing to others. And so my encouragement is not to push down, but to lift up.
The way forward is that we need each other. We have to have each other. That's the reason God established the church. That's the reason Jesus, during his earthly ministry, established the church. He knew we would need each other. We needed him, but we needed the church because we needed each other. Because in it we find the truth. And in it we find the real heart of God. There is a uh, statement that I wrote down. Uh, it was in the Arkansas Baptist News uh, magazine. And by the way, I don't think they even print that anymore. I happened to get it on my iPad, and I'm glad I did. <laughs> Ralph Winter. He lived from 1924 to 2009. He founded the U.S. Center for World Missions. And this is what he said, and this really impressed me. He said, if you can't see very far ahead, don't go alone. I want to tell you, that speaks volumes to me about the fellowship of a church, of a long-range planning committee. Now, Jesus may come at any moment, but he may not come for 20 years, and he may not come for 50 years, and he intends that his church keep preaching the gospel, keep making disciples. But isn't that encouraging? If you can't see very far ahead, and brother, we can't, don't go alone. Well, the executive secretary of Arkansas Baptist paraphrased this this way. He said, if I can find what he said, where did I write that down at? Oh, okay. I was bragging about my age. Now I'm, now I'm experiencing it. <laughs> let me back up and let me correct the quote. Can you edit this broadcast? <laughs> Ralph Winter's quote is this. If you can't see very far ahead, go ahead as far as you can see. Did I say that? I can't remember. <laughs> and the executive secretary of the Arkansas Baptist said, if you can't see very far ahead, don't go alone. And he quotes this from the message, Proverbs 20, verse 18. Form your purpose by asking for counsel then carry it out using all the help you can get. So the road ahead is a good road. It is a glorious road because it's the road that the Lord God of heaven has laid out for us. And we get to be part of it. And God wants us to be together. And I pray that uh, somehow, <laughs> uh, out of what I've had to say tonight, you'll be blessed. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to be together with your people and to see all of the work that you have done in the midst of this congregation and to expect and Lord to glory in the things that you're going to do that Lord maybe we'll get to be a part of some of it but we'll all get to remember it in glory and I pray that we will be faithful to you in everything. 
And so, Lord, tonight, bring to our memory how much you love us and care for us, how you'll never leave us, and how you want us to stay together to glorify your name. For we pray in Christ's name. Amen. We thank you for joining us this evening at Rahel Baptist Church, and may God richly bless you.